What up guys, it is your solid snake Jules Gill and his opposing force, the giggling <laughs> squid, Scott Telford. I mean that's not even a character. It is now. Uh, sure. we, we're going to be doing something a bit different on the gaming channel today because we love to keep you guessing. We have heard recently that there is going to be, there's more movement on the Metal Gear Solid movie. Yes. Isn't there? Some... It's actually going ahead, it's what people are actually well, saying. It's, uh, it's definitely got a, it's got a director which is Jordan Vogt Roberts, he's mm -hmm. the guy that did Kong Skull Island and uh, he's been working with Kojima for the last few years to get the script right. Mm -hmm. He sat sat there. He then sat down with uh, Sony, and he basically told them, "Like, look, this is there's a really generic way you guys can make this, and that's not what we're going to do." I know Metal Gear because he's grown up with the franchise as yep. well. He's a really good guy, this Jordan Vogt Roberts. <laughs> and uh, he basically sat down with Sony and said, "Look, I know how to do this thing, um, and we're going to do it like the right way." And so whatever, but the the main linchpin, the main stickler at the minute is that Konami haven't been contacted yet. Right. Okay. So that could just you know torpedo the whole thing, I as mean, Konami likes to do. That is kind of like basically saying, hey guys, you want to meet for a game of football, and then not having a football, <laughs> or inviting the kid who does have a football. It's until more the kid already there. Yeah. At the, and the kid that has to license the football has is needs to be contacted. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is uh, we are also gonna jump on this bandwagon, mm. and we're gonna try and cast the movie. Now we're not casting every single person in it because we're not entirely sure what the story is gonna be. But we've been told it's gonna be an amalgamation of all of the stories. That. So that's confusing enough. But and with Kojima's well, no, love of sort of twists and turns, I mean that could be in anyone's. In it's there. not um, necessarily an amalgamation. He said it would be a stand. Alone. And it just said that he's pulling from all the canon and he would do a standalone movie. And he said it's going to have some. That's what amalgamation is. That's what it's, you take well, something some and group it together. I, yeah, I kind of <laughs> read it as more of like a like a separate story altogether. Metal Gear Amalgamation. That's it's what a versus this, thing. That's it, what it's so. called. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to pitch a few ideas uh, and then we're going to discuss what we think would be perfect for the role. Yes. And then we're going to let you guys decide who you think won. So, consider this a battle to the air. Eh. And uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. So why don't we kick things off by casting the big boy himself, the big boss, or... Or Solid Mr. Snake, Solid Snake. If you want to call him that. So that's the whole thing with this, um, is that the, potentially, depending on what era of Metal Gear we're going for, obviously there's always two timelines. Mm. So we're gonna, we potentially have a Solid Snake, which is like Metal Gear Solid 1. Like even Metal Gear 1 to 2 is a different looking snake. Yeah, maybe we should just focus on it being Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, because that's okay. the one I'd say that people are the most familiar with. Uh, that, yeah. that, that, that would just set some ground rules then, because then if we start adding in all of the stuff that happened in Metal Gear Solid 5, for example, then things start, to do. I think start to get a bit much. Lucky, don't they? I think you just you have two like base aesthetics like you've got like the thin jawline version from Metal mm -hmm. Gear One, you've got the more Kurt Russell like Escape from LA version from Metal Gear Two, yeah. and then you've got like the gruff like beardy dude from Metal Gear Three. Yeah. But if we're casting Metal Gear Solid One, yeah. then my pick is Scott Eastwood. Who, Scott Eastwood, what does he look like? He's then? he's that man. He was in Suicide Squad, which is the worst possible reinforcement oh, for why I, he matters. Yeah, I know him, but I think he's a cool dude, and I, I know he's not got like the best acting chops, but mm. I think he could like he he needs something to step up. He needs something to like a role. That he can call not necessarily his own, but something that like he has the platform to deliver on. That's, I mean, that's plus he looks like Clint Eastwood. That's that's a fair one to choose. The only thing I would say is that, like you say, he hasn't really proven himself in an action role or even in a lead role. Whereas mm. my pick mm -hmm. has done both and done both pretty well. Go my on. pick is Carl Urban. Ooh, now, okay. now this is the thing. A lot of people have been saying online that. And I mean, look at his chubby little cheeky face there. <laughs> I thought, I thought that, I thought that. <laughs> he looks like Dave Grohl. Yeah, yeah, he does actually. <laughs> and that's the thing is that a lot of people went for Hugh Jackman with this and I was like yeah I can understand that so I kind of went off the beaten path a little bit uh -huh. with somebody who kind of looks like Hugh Jackman but at the same time has proven himself in action films with being in Dread he's yeah, yeah. excellent in that yeah. he's got an amazing voice which is quite gravelly as yeah, it is so he yeah, can yeah. go down and I just think that he'd be a very good fit for the role Ooh. He's quite he loves his um, he does lots of Muay Thai or something like that he does lots of uh, yeah he's a lot of like, action star I mean like, like again it would depend what sort of snake they do like because yeah. the original version is more of like a, just a brawler whereas the one they rebuilt in Twin Snakes is a martial arts missile flipping weirdo. Yeah, true that. I mean, it ought to be fair. To hell with Twin Snakes. To be fair, if you're going to do a casting call for Metal Gear Solid, Solid Snake, then really you only need to give them one line, and that is Meryl. <laughs> Meryl! Or oh, Liquid! Liquid! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he we, would like, not be getting the part. That's, that's that kind way. of the thing, though. Like, I mean, he's at least quite hard to cast Snake, because you need a guy that's yeah. like kind of athletically built and kind of has the charm. He needs to be lovable, not just admirable. He needs to be someone that you go, I love that guy. Yeah. He needs yeah. to pull out the one-liners, but he needs to also be a badass, and then he has to have like the voice. And the voice like, is, for me, the, the be-all and end-all. You yeah. can have a guy who's like slightly chubby or doesn't fit the aesthetic role right. fully, but it's got to come across in the voice, which actually inspires a few of my later picks. Ah, okay. So, so 
so, we jump on to the big baddie? And we think that the big baddie in this case is probably going to be Liquid Snake. They're not really going to drop you in with like, uh, what was the uh, one from Metal Gear Solid 2? Uh, uh, Solidus? Solidus. They probably wouldn't chuck, it, chuck him. I don't think so. Away. I think it, I'd love it if this takes off and they start doing a whole bunch of connecting films yeah, and we can, I mean, we can get into that great. stuff. So we're imagining the slicked back hair, brown trench coat very wearing, English. chest exposed, <laughs> very English. Yes. And who have you picked for that? My pick, uh, I went to Tom Hiddleston. Um, that is I a want him solid, to... solid choice. Thank you. Very I want him solid. to... Uh, literally, I'm imagining... Because obviously, you've seen Thor. Yep. At the end of Thor, when uh, he's fighting off against uh, against Thor himself, and like Thor's just like, Loki, this is madness. And he yep. looks back and he's like, is it? Is it? Is it? He probably like, gets all like mental Englishman. And I'm like, yeah, just embody that. Just yeah. embody the whole, how dare you? I can do whatever. I think, I think, I mean, I think that's a very solid pick. Hiddleston actually. needs some bulk on him. I would say that he's not as physically that. imposing as Liquid Snake kind no. of needs to be. But the character of Liquid is the whole, I got the recessive genes. And like, yeah. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like he needs to be more snarling and like he always has a plan and he's very I mean, self confident. I mean, I mean but that's, uh, that's Loki. That's Loki in a yeah. nutshell. I mean, you've got the Thor uh, thing of like, I'm the big strong dude. Mm-hmm. Like, that's obviously the Liquid Snake. Sorry, it's a Solid Snake. And mm-hmm. then you've got this sort of recessive gene person being. Um, being yeah, like and like that. like Loki's a little bit more snarling. Like he's a bit of a brat. Mm-hmm. But like I think yeah, if if Hilston got the muscle on, mm-hmm. then he would be my shout for for Liquid. I think that's a very good shout. I mean, Thanks. I've gone for a guy who's already proven his acting chops. He's quite like heavy. He's been in a few comic book movies. I'm talking, of course, about Josh Brolin. Oh, now, now I know that he might not have the accent for it because he's quite intimidating when he talks. He's got a very, uh, he's got a presence. Let's put it that way. But I think that that could work really well in what I would consider um. to be because I don't think this is going to be the Metal Gear Solid film that we want. I think this will be like the Assassin's Creed one and the Prince of oh. Persia one. It will be the Hollywood like a separate. It'll thing. be the Hollywood yeah. thing. So I think that they will go for a classic, almost Hollywood-style villain, yeah. big, imposing in your face, and I think. Think Josh Brolin would do well. I couldn't see him pulling off the bare-chested trench coat look. No, maybe he wouldn't do. I think that maybe he would have a lot of bandoliers cleverly <laughs> placed to uh, support and uh, get, yeah. get, get it going. But I think that as an actor, I think that he would be incredibly intimidating. He could nail the like if they did ever did like a liquid ocelot thing. Mel Gibson, mm. he could nail because he's way more covered up. He's got he's Very blended true. with ocelot a bit. He's way more like carries himself a bit better. Liquid's almost like showboating and flamboyant in spots, especially Mel Gibson one. I think that I would probably say out of the two of our picks, yours is probably the stronger just because. Thanks. The fact that it's the acting talent that goes across, but mm. I think that if you're going to go for a Hollywood version of it, then Brolin would be. Brolin would be a great bad guy as well. As we're probably I mean, going to well, see Thanos. Th- Thanos, and we've also got Cable. So, oh, those, yeah. those, so those are two ways for him to show his acting mm. chops even further. Mm-hmm. So uh, what about uh, Grey Fox? Do, 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 I do have that? an image. Uh, my okay, so Grey Fox. Um, yeah, my shout for Grey Fox is Paul Bettany. Oh, that's a wicked shout. He's got, <laughs> he's got such a good voice. Because are we actually assuming that we're going to see Grey Fox out of the suit? I mean, the thing is, with it being a standalone movie, they can pull from a different stuff and mm-hmm. a lot of different stuff. And uh, Grey Fox is a hell of a character. Like, I mean, you have him. Like, obviously, he's the cyborg ninja. Um, but across the games, like, we found out that he was like, experimented on as a child. Like, he became yeah. Null. And like, when he's Null in the like the portable games, like, he's kind of like this child soldier who's yeah. like embodied by stuff. Uh, he's like, not, being he's experimented not a happy on bunny, stuff. is he? He's not a happy bunny. And like, the more that he goes on, the more he has to embody this like tortured psyche. Mm-hmm. Like he has to come out and t- when he takes his mask off and like you know talks to Snake about how he like uh, co adopted like adopted Mar- um, Naomi and like mm-hmm. brought her up and he was this like foster brother and yeah. like he's he's a tormented guy that like lives for the, th- the thrill of the fight and then dies. Yeah, and no, so, I, I think that that's a perfect choice because I mean thanks. we've already seen him as a tortured soul in um, is it the Da Vinci Code? Totally. Plays, yeah, yep. plays that. And that was that was what I thought of. Yeah, I think that because like, obviously he's like albino there, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, so well, I've got him like and he's got his little hood. Oh, on. there he is. Yeah, yeah. So I that, think he can yeah, pull that off. Would be perfect if we saw his face. So now I went for a different perspective and I went for Andrew Scott aka the, oh, the bad guy from Sherlock because okay. yeah, yeah. I think that it's the voice I'm imagining him that we don't see his face but mm. we just see the sort of like almost slightly digitised <laughs> voice and he does crazy really he could, well he could do that scene where Fox loses his mind exactly, and, exactly. and that's the thing really I was well. thinking of, of him just going absolutely mental and kind of it's his laughter it's his like schizophrenic behaviour mm. would work really well with the guy who's kind of fighting within the suit yeah, yeah. within himself sort of thing I think that could work that would be really cool I don't know how um, physical Andrew Scott can be. He's like, in terms quite of... a slight guy, but then yeah. I thought to myself, maybe this would be a case where his fight scenes were done by a stunt double, uh, because oh, yeah. I imagine they would be in, yeah, yeah. in the film anyway, and he would just be providing the voice yeah. of 
I'm only just thinking if they ever did like because if they ever go into the real backstory of the characters mm-hmm. and then they have like child soldier Noel Grey Fox yeah. then yeah. you've got like and, you, and plus like one of the most iconic scenes that's described or whatever is like Snake versus Frank Yeager before yeah. he even is the ninja yeah. uh, fighting in a minefield oh, yeah. so like yeah. our version of that would be like mine would be Scott Eastwood versus um, what's his chops Paul Bettany yeah. whereas like yours would be but mine would just be more of like just picking it straight up from the first game and yeah. we don't really get any backstory <clears throat> flashbacks it would just be a case of like you know who I am yeah. like, they Sort of expose that uh, backstory. I, would, I mean, the, the most, the most, the easiest plot to put on screen is the first game, the Metal Gear Solid, the first. Yeah, game. I mean, that's kind of what I approach this yeah. with, is because I think that not only is it one of the strongest stories in the in the series mm-hmm. because it's simple, Kojima. It's simple compared to well, the rest of your stuff. Simple compared to the rest. Lots of, of genome therapy. In I, that, yeah. I understood it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, did yeah. not understand Metal Gear Solid Two. Metal Gear Solid Two made me feel very stupid. Oh, the I, yeah, the, the whole end of that game was absolute the, insanity. When the Lale Lule Lo came out. Oh, God. Lale Lule lost my mind, mate. <laughs> right, anyway, so let's jump on to Otacon. Otacon. Uh, my shout for Otacon. Otacon. Otacon is a weird uh, shout because he's... He's a character that like is obviously the archetypal manga nerd, and he gets yeah. introduced in that way. And he his opening scene is him wet wetting himself. Yeah. So my cast for Otacon was someone who kind of has that like inherent like value underneath the the the, the awkwardness. Right. So I went with Joseph Gordon Levitt, which uh, is no, strange. He's, he's, no, no, he's great at pulling out sort of uh, emotional depth from yes. characters. Yeah, okay. and I also I like if, if you need to convey because they do it in Metal Gear Four, they quickly just go like, oh, these two guys are these two characters are in a bad spot. Yeah. Naomi and Otacon just like hook up, and I was like, if you get Gordon Levitt to just like flash that smile yeah, and then you've got Naomi just being yeah. like oh actually there is something more to him than just this little nerd in the corner I wonder what he'd look like with kind of long hair well, that's with the, the mop yeah. sort of wig and the glasses and give him the glasses because I mean that can change the look of a person completely as we've seen from She's All That what a film I've not seen that movie <laughs> is well, she all that we should be cast in that later on mate <laughs> um, yeah I think that that's a really good shout actually because that's... he's he always He's quite a strong presence, but he knows when to dial it back. He knows when to be a supporting guy. Yeah, just caster. be a support guy. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, uh, Inception's a great example of that. Totally. Like, he could steal the scene in many of his... Yeah, and Otacon has lots of like time to shine as well. Like, I mean, it would be him and like my Scott Eastwood or whatever doing that really cool handshake from Metal Gear 2. Oh, yeah. So, like, <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. I would, like, I would have that. So, yeah, he'd be my, my ultimate support man. That's a good one. I, I went for Eddie Redmayne. Oh God! Now, I that, don't that, really like Eddie Redmayne. Now that's that's fine. I, I understand that he doesn't like sit float everyone's boat, but I just think that he gets across this this nerd persona very mm. very well. Like he's incredibly strong as an actor. I mean, we've seen him in sort of like Theory of Everything. Mm-hmm. He's powerful in mm-hmm. that, but I think that he's got that quickness that allows for comic timing. I think that he can hmm. be. He would be a good person to play off of Carl Urban's really serious yeah, roughness. Yeah, if I yeah, was yeah. to choose two diametrically that, opposing that's, people, that's, those are the two people I'd Yeah, that's choose. a great shot. Because, yeah, I mean, what, I'm, when I, what, I, what I mean when I say I don't like Eddie Redmond is I don't like his roles. Like, yeah, he's no, always no. been a great guy. Yeah. But, like, when I look at him in... Uh, what was that movie where he was that really ridiculous over-the-top villain? Well, I don't think it was Cloud Atlas. It was the thing that the, um, the Wachowskis did, I think. There was some oh, movie where I he was a I horrendous villain. It. Lots of really high-pitched screaming, like a bad Moriarty. Right, okay. And I just kind of went, like, oh, God, mate. But, like, he's got some good roles. Like he is the ultimate like quirky little nerd. Yeah, and I think that's that's what could do. He could do that. He would he would he would pee his pants very well. Yeah, he he would. Yeah, Yeah, and things he would pee his pants, but you'd still be like, fair player, still respect (laughs) him. Like he's got that about him. Yeah. Right, let's jump onto the female bandwagon then, Uh, and let's talk about Merle. So Merle, Merle. Uh, my shout for Merle is actually Emily Blunt, uh, channeling her Edge of Tomorrow performance. Oh, that is a sick shout. Thank you. That is really good. Um, Because you need someone who. I mean, the thing is, like Merle in Metal Gear Solid One is. Is uh, pretty much uh, yeah. she turns into the damsel in distress, especially at the end of the game. You just have to, you know, decide whether to, to save her or not. Mm-hmm. But she is the colonel's daughter, and she is like the, she has gone through military training, uh, and you know she does like st- she kicks that guard in and steals his uniform. Yeah, of course. And she helps drive the the jeep at the end. Like she has t- moments to shine. But I think if you did the movie version, they would give her more to do. Yeah, and Emily Blunt would put the physicality into it. What was the film that she was in with Tom Cruise called again? It was Edge of Edge, Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow, cool, because it had a different name abroad. Yeah, I forget yeah, what it was Dyer called. Pete or something like that. Yeah, like, therapy. Yeah. Yes, but that was a fantastic film, mm-hmm. like Groundhog Day with Aliens. Yes. Like, I mean, <laughs> oh, you can't go wrong with that. And <laughs> she did really well in that to convey somebody who started off as what I thought was being kind of like a stereotypical female bitch badass, right. and then developed into somebody with a yeah. bit of character. So I was like, fair play to you. And it's, it'd be really awkward. I mean, obviously they're not going to do the whole leering ass shot that he has in Metal Gear 1 to identify I Meryl. I would say They might do. They I don't might, think they, they will. They might do. But they obviously, like, Meryl walks this really weird line between being, like, kind of like, you know, like... Uh, 
viewed like appealingly or whatever, mm-hmm. then she's kind of vulnerable, and then she kind of comes into her own, then she gets wounded mortally, mm-hmm. sniper wolf mm-hmm. blows her leg off mm-hmm. or shoots her, and then Snake saves her at the end. So she has a weird arc for, if, if they adapted that movie. Yeah. I think they would do more because she, like, she comes into her own, especially Metal Gear 4. She's the leader oh, of the yeah, frogs or the, she, sorry, the, uh, the team, whatever the team is, her team that's, is. That's a proper character shift. Yeah, and yeah. I think if, if if what Vote Roberts is doing is picking from the whole canon, then mm-hmm. you would have that whole arc in one movie. She yeah. would go from being like vulnerable and useless no. to like. You know, the leader of some platoon. I agree with you on that. So, yeah, Emily Bluntage. So, I went for Lena Headey. Oh, Oh, nice. And I think that she is just... I mean, we've seen Game of Thrones. She is so strong a presence on camera. She would have been my shelf like the boss. Well, that's the thing. I was torn between her being the boss of that, but I think that that's kind of what Meryl represents to me, at least in the storylines, is that she is kind of like... Solid Snake's version of the boss in a very different form. Like it's kind of a person who he admires through battle. Mm. They grow. He like has some sort of weird affectionate thing for her, but it's not love, but it is love. It kind of is. Yeah. yeah. He, he sort of feels sorry for her. Like it's yeah. Like she's the rookie, and and, like, and I think that it's kind of like almost like the roles have been reversed. Almost like he's where he was when he met the boss and stuff like that. So mm. I feel like oh, yeah. they, I feel like there should be some similarities between the actresses that play them. Maybe. I and mean I that would that, that would go into the whole like the overall arc of her mm. getting stronger. Mm. Yeah. Like, I mean I don't know how because Lena Headey like I can't think of any roles that she's done where she's more like on the back foot like she's always kind of like a really, she's always quite aggressive like strong like, and aggressive I mean yeah. like Mama in um in Dredge she's yep. fantastic as that and I would like to see her bring that sort of like do not give a shit attitude <laughs> uh, towards this and she does that really well mm-hmm. I think that if she started off as being like this really hard nosed person who softens to Snake as the film goes on then mm. that could work really well yeah because they could invert the stuff from the games like it's usually that she starts out soft and becomes hard yeah, and get full yeah. but they could t- like, she would be the perfect person to but, do that but the only thing I, I worry about though is, is that like maybe she has been a bit typecast because of this mm. like Cersei like Lannister has pretty much meant that any role that she does after this she will be Considered for bitch status yeah, straight she's, away. She's Queen B. But then the again, that, but then again, like she can soften it because she's a decent actress. So. Yeah. Uh, let's jump over to Ryan. Oh, Ryan is one of the Raiden, hardest ones. You want to be like. Funny. It's definitely one of the hardest ones to cast because you need someone who's kind of like a little bit of feminine, and you need mm-hmm. someone that starts out as a laughing stock, and then like over the course of the game gets their backstory filled in as like this child soldier who actually went through a whole lot of stuff, is suppressing a whole lot of their memories, yeah. um, and needs to like you know unfold over time kind of thing. So my shelf for uh, Ryden is Ezra. Miller, who's going to be the Flash, the new Flash. Oh, uh, that's Justice a really League. good shout, actually. Because I need a guy who, like I said, like has like those like effeminate features, but can also pull off something like the ridiculous skull suit that he wears in Metal Gear 2. He's got a really good uh, sense of comic timing as well. Like, yeah. Uh, like, like, the one thing that I think that saves this sort of DC uh, Justice League stuff is that anything that he's been seen in has a little... Uh, yeah, air, right, a little really bit of like levity, yeah. yeah and I like um, that. But yeah, I think you need a guy sort of like him that just like again he'd be alongside like Scott Eastwood or whatever, mm-hmm. and like like my version or whatever. Um, and he would have that sort of physical presence, like yep. enough to like. You, we've seen him wear this. We've seen him wear like a full body suit as the Flash. Yep. Um, I think he could wield a katana pretty damn well. And if they ever did Metal Gear Four and made him the badass cyborg scarred ninja, he would yeah. look like this fragile. Because the whole point of riding is that he's this fragile guy inside this exosuit. Yeah. And like yeah, for, for me that was like that was my shout. I like that. That's a good shout. I mean. Thank I went for Jake Gyllenhaal. Now, oh, I know, now this is the thing. Like, a lot of people would be like, "That seems like a very weird choice." He's, I think but he's stronger. It's, it's based on the fact of, of Nightcrawler. Like, Nightcrawler to me showed that he has such a well of a, like emotional depth to like. Pull oh, up. I was just oh, yeah, I was thinking. thinking of, was he Nightcrawler? Yeah, no, I'm with yeah, you. yeah. And yeah. that's the thing. That just shows you what what your perceived notion of totally, what he is yeah. versus like what he's done recently. And I think that in if he could harness some of that character and bring it into this, then what you get is this kind of person who's almost trying to be cockier than they are yeah. and having this real insecurity on show for everyone else and then him being beaten down becoming this mm. massive like amazing cyborg mm-hmm. that everyone then suddenly loves <laughs> and then he's kind of like trajectory goes straight back up again mm-hmm. so I think that like it's an odd it would be a risk putting him in it because I mean I think he's played like a support role in a while yeah that's the thing <sighs> I, I, I believe oh, he would be a main character if they did the Metal Gear 2 type stuff. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, be, I believe that he would, it would be an investment. Mm-hmm. It would be like, get him in as a support character for the first film, and if they did carry on and make a second one, mm-hmm. then he would be able to rise into that sort of role yeah. a lot better because it's more who he is, mm-hmm. and he'd be going from Nightcrawler to something more, Yeah, more I think um, the we should character. clarify, yeah, Nightcrawler is a separate movie that Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal did yeah. a couple of years ago yeah. or whatever, which is a fantastic movie. Oh, God, he plays such a weirdo in it. And I think that, that it's that <laughs> weirdness that like instantly made me think, oh, he'd be a good rider. Yeah, Ryden uh, is an extremely strange character. Obviously, he was he was played up to be this useless rookie because the whole yeah. point was that he provides the, the mirror to Snake. You're supposed yeah. to go, oh, God, this guy's useless to, to make Snake bigger. Um, so, yeah, you need someone else that could help champion our main men. 
But and let's 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 talk about who would be behind the scenes, mm. leading them through the earpiece. Let's talk about Colonel Campbell. Now, yeah, Campbell, like his original design was inspired by very heavily Richard Krenner from Rambo. Oh right, like he okay. looks just like him. In yeah, movies. yeah. Krenner's now passed away sadly. He yeah, passed away back in like 2003. Mm-hmm. Um, so you couldn't get someone like that. So then you start thinking, well, who are the other like Colonel roles? And yeah. uh, in more modern movies, well, not that modern, but like Avatar had like Stephen Lang as like, the over oh, the top yeah, yeah. cigar chomping guy. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't have someone as over the top as that. I actually went for Brian Cranston. Um, oh, that's good because he's like. Because he has a tenacity to him. And Brian Cranston, like, he has this ability to just kind of warp into any role that he does yeah. really well. Like, have you seen um, Trumbo yet? No, but I need to. That's a wicked film because mm. obviously, after this sort of crazy over the topness that he did as, uh, like, in uh, Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. seeing him so dull back reserved in a completely different role, and then I almost forgot it was him. So I was right. like, that's the sign. Of well, a he's, very he's good really actor. solid, even in Godzilla. Like, he kind of steals that movie and he's mm-hmm. only in it for like 20 minutes or Yeah, whatever. everyone was talking about his, yeah. his role in it. And it was like, oh, yeah, there's also a giant radioactive but- Five, five things <laughs> There's also a Godzilla, yeah. but um, yeah, one of the things with Campbell, like he, you know, he deceives Snake and Mel Gibson. Mm-hmm. One that he has, he has to keep a lot of secrets to himself. There's a whole weird thing in Mel Gibson Four where you're led to believe he's dating Rose, even though she's like a third of his age. Oh yeah. Um, but then that's revealed to be a twist because they were like deceiving the Patriot AI. I know a lot about Mel Gibson. Fish and mailed. Yes, fish and mailed. But you need a guy that like is still lovable, even yeah. though like he has all this like you know like balancing act that he has to, have mm. to do because he has his duty, he has his personal like things that he wants to do. He wants to look after Snake. As a friend, but also he's the guy that's giving him the mission brief or whatever. I think that's so. Uh, yeah, you need a guy that can sort of like be tough in the role, but mm. ultimately have redemption. So that was my shout with Cranston. Now, see, I kind of again played to Hollywood's strengths and thought, okay, well, anyone who's played the game knows that the Colonel's got a bit of a shady past. <laughs> yeah. Who's really good at playing a shady past while being a very authoritative figure? And my thoughts was Kevin Spacey. Now, Ooh. obviously, House of Cards has shown that he can be completely duplicitous, and, but also be quite warm and it makes friendly. Him so hard to trust. And, now. and that's the, and that's the <laughs> thing. It, like, you'll never trust Kevin Spacey in any film. No. Uh, but the thing is, is that his presence there will be the underlying sort of tension going. When's he going to betray? Right, yeah. What's he going to do? <laughs> but uh, but at the same time, he's authoritative, so he'll be able to be like, "Listen, Snake, you respect me, I respect you." I feel like they would play off well. Together. He would be so great if it did the whole. AI I twist Mel Gibson. Yes, that's the thing. That's, again, <laughs> you can monologue that so Ima- well. Imagine that just sort of happening in the film, <laughs> and then you're like, "Oh, there it is! It's the twist, and it's His the skull weirdest, face. and it's the weirdest bit of it." God, I can. I His mean, gardening tip. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. They just need Love to call it. the movie I need says it's sixty one yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but like, I wonder if they'll ever do the twists like that because game, obviously gaming audiences have experienced those things. Mm. That in a big Hollywood blockbuster, the whole by the way, half these characters were AIs the whole time. Yeah. that would be fantastically I divisive. I would, I would love it if they did that. Right, so let's close this out now by talking about the big bear, bad lady that is the boss. We do have another one after this. Well, we do have another one, but I think it's a really obvious choice. But I do we'll, not. Which uh, we'll get, we'll get I do one. not, which we'll see. Let's yes. talk about the boss. Let's cut the cheese and smash the cake. So for me, the boss, there's only one person who could ever be the boss, uh, it. and it is Robin Wright from House of Cards, Claire Underwood. Oh, so you've cut, so it would go well with the cast. Oh, we the same Kevin, one. Kevin then. Spacey. Obviously. Well, yeah, that yeah, would yeah, kind yeah. of work. Um, yeah. Obviously, the different timelines yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's not been a single uh, like obviously she was in The Princess Bride and mm-hmm. she's been in a lot of little bit part roles mm-hmm. Robin Wright has had a hell of a career resurgence as Claire Underwood mm-hmm. she's just this incredible presence on screen like very strong kind of sexy like kind of has this kind of like, sexy mate hella sexy hella sexy kind of has this whole like kind of weird like mother role going on like kind of looking after Frank Underwood yeah, yeah, yeah. like she can kind of be like caring but also kind of duplicitous she would be perfect for the scene in Metal Gear 3 where she has to reveal the scar yeah. and like kind of do the whole like actually like she, she would have to deliver that whole monologue yeah, that like actually yeah. she's deceived the whole world and she's taking the rap for it and like whatever like if they did the Metal Gear 3 like rug pull that she's actually like the boss's mission is the one that's going to see her killed I think she could nail that role and right. she looks just like the boss too like yeah. she has the strength in her jawline and all that kind of thing that's a very good shout thank you however however <laughs> is she the acting powerhouse on the same level as Kate Blanchett because Kate Blanchett not only looks like the boss, because again, of, yeah. that, of that square jaw, yeah, yeah. that, that perfect profile, mm. but she is a monologue queen. Like it's true. She would be able to do the whole uh, whole thing in this in the field, just like that. Ev- that scene would be she's perfect. Like, with she's her. haunting. Like, that's the thing. Yeah. And that's what the boss is. The boss literally <sighs> haunts. Snake, Snake by, yeah. by giving him that that emotional goodbye and then that fight, mm. and it's just like she would be able to make that scene She'd be so great. emotional. They'd, I think they'd both be solid. I think for me, I need more strength because the boss has to overpower Snake multiple I times. I mean, yeah, she, her frame is quite slight, but I think that... Mm, 
Yeah. She'd be great though. Like, yeah, she take, she has the sort of like haunting because the whole crack with the boss's monologue is that she's already got this all figured out. Yeah, like her ideologies like frame the entire Metal Gear yeah. universe. Uh, and so it's very it's very, yeah. very similar to the uh, the Watchmen uh, thirty five minutes ago speech. Right, thing, isn't right. It? It's kind of like I've already had my plan in motion. Mm-hmm. This is already happening. Yeah. you can't really stop me. Yeah. sort of thing. And that all that all leads into the whole like actually no, you need to pull the trigger on me right now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah. like yeah, she would like yeah, especially with like kind of her eyes. She's very like mystical. She kind of has this whole like enrapturing kind of sense. Like and I think that we. So in, like, and I think Kate, Kate Blanchett would be perfect for that. Yeah. So um, yeah. we're going to go down to our final one now, and it's an easy choice. Well, who do you think? It is for some of us. We're just going to say it on like three, two, one. Who we're going to cast <laughs> for Ocelot? Three, two, one. Kurt Daniel Russell. Day Lewis. I mean, it's K- it's Kurt Russell. It's Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Why would it be Kurt, Kurt Russell? Russell? Is him? Like it literally. Like it, like I know that he was uh, had this whole thing of like, oh, he's Snake Plissken and yeah. blah blah blah. blah. Yep. But now you look at him. With his tash, with his gunslinging and bone tomahawk, he is Ocelot. There's, okay, so if, if we're going to cast Ocelot outside of aesthetics, you need someone who is way more duplicitous and way he, like at any given time, Ocelot is playing four different factions against one another. Yeah, that's true. Kurt Russell kind of has an inherent positivity to him. Plus, like I said, he was already the inspiration for like the Snake Plissken. Na- well, according to Kojima, he wasn't, but, but whatever. Think, but I think that that'd be such a good callback to it. It's kind of like he's in the film that kind of gave birth to the franchise. I just, Ocelot, like uh, like even aesthetically, I think he needs to be more wiry than someone like. Russell is like you kind of more like a Sam Elliott type like you need like a like an old ancient cowboy like mm. his whole crack especially in scenes like Metal Gear 2 when he like walks out and delivers to Galukovic that he's actually betraying him yeah. like you need a guy that can command the screen you need a guy like Daniel Day-Lewis who like has like a handful of scenes but would absolutely nail them every time I have to admit if he was still acting because obviously he fan has, casting yeah, fan casting I know that but it's like <laughs> if he was still acting I think that he would be a fantastic choice he'd never do maybe it maybe we should combine the two pe- <laughs> the two right <laughs> yes. and, and find a person who is lithe um, incredibly sneaky with a good tash and also could grow a good tash but also possibly has a weird hairline because mm. of that mm. and you know it's Rafe Fiennes <laughs> <laughs> like he's just Voldemort basically as him Cry- like, yeah I that, mean, that, sure. would, that would be good as well yeah, you need the, it, that's it, a third it, option as long as you have someone that has the intensity to pull off the amount of just the mm. sheer amount of betrayals that Ocelot pulls off yeah. across the franchise I mean um, would you trust Rafe Fiennes I wouldn't, which I guess plays into the thing, but I wouldn't trust Daniel Day-Lewis either. So that was our fan casting of the potentially upcoming Metal Gear Solid movie, I if it ever so. gets through Konami's uh, weird system of yes, no. If they've forgiven whatever they... Because they've got this weird thing with Kojima where they stopped his company getting health insurance this, and all but, that kind yeah, of thing. But this, this is the thing, is that Konami are weird. They make a lot of mistakes mm-hmm. and pachinko machines, yep. but... They love money. They do love money. And, and if there is the right amount of money there, I reckon that this film will go I, I hope so. I mean, obviously it's going to be incredibly interesting to see who does get cast as Snake. Yeah. And if any of our things stuff happens to be correct, that'll be mental. Yeah. But, but be cool. Yeah, but this is the thing, guys. Like, let us know what you thought about our choices in the comment section below. Let us, you know, give us an ups and downs or something like that. Just, like, make your own list. Whatever. Daniel you, J. Lewis. You do you. All We've done us. Daniel. <laughs> is Team Lewis or Team Russell you know the winner Team Lewis right okay so uh, anyway that was our fan casting hope you enjoyed it and we will see you <laughs> soon see I should play him I've got the hell CQC for it. all the way CQC rations anyway right bye you. though <laughs> bye